Oh, Tom, thank you for joining me this day. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so, so much for asking me to be part of this, Peggy. I'm honored and I'm excited to chat. I know. So like, listen, I don't know. I'm just saying like, I know how exciting. Um, I like to talk to you because you're really smart about stuff. And <laughs> I was adamant. I'm like, Tom has got to show up in literally everything that I do or else because secretly you have this mind of this genius marketer, community builder, work, work smarter, not harder, even though I know that you're a hard worker and you do a lot of smart things all at once, which is why it's harder. Anyway, you get it. So I know that you have a lot of fun tidbits and I would love to hear your thoughts about what you are focusing on right now as far as your, you know, what things are really gravitating in your mind like, oh, this is really a hurdle or this is something that's really getting in my way and this is this brilliant way that I surpass it. I <laughs> um well, again, I'm really excited to chat and I love what you're doing with this event. I think it's incredible. So good for you for putting the whole thing together. I don't know how you do it and how you spin all the plates. It's very impressive. Um, I also have to say that I always love chatting live with you, especially after our infamous live that we did at my company <laughs> where there were so many technical issues. It turned into like a comedy sketch <laughs> for people. I'm still receiving emails from people who are like, you and Tom need to have your own show. You and Tom, like it's, I'm not kidding you. Still, just like two days ago, I got another one that was like, so have you talked to Tom about this yet? And I'm thinking like, <laughs> if, first of all, if I brought this up to Tom as an idea, he would try to really politely find a way to be like, this is the last thing in the world I want to do. Oh, and not, or, but, and, okay. And, or Tom is like the busiest person in the world. And the last thing I want to do is be like, Tom, here's this other thing. Take it on. <laughs> well, I, I did. I'm kind of coming out of burnout right now. And I feel like in future, whenever I burn out, I need to go back and watch that video just to cheer myself up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so true. Yeah, so um, for those yeah, who don't know what we're talking about, Tom um is the founder of Design Cuts and <clears throat> which is a brilliant platform for all things very highly curated digital resources from, you know, Adobe to Affinity to Procreate, etc. um fonts even layouts, templates, mock whatever, all the things that are great. Um he also is really, really, really big on community. And so he hosts lives with artists like myself and, you know, other brilliant minds. I don't know why I'm included in that pack, but I'll take it. Um, and you definitely are. <laughs> we had a live where I was demonstrating a Procreate tutorial and it was just a shit show. <laughs> it was like... It was so good. What, what was it? It was like, you couldn't hear me, but myself so and everyone else could hear you. I was explaining this to somebody yesterday. It was that, yeah, so that was part of it at, at some point. There was a part where nobody could hear me. And I was doing the demonstration on the iPad. And so I started using a text box to type out what I was about to do. And then I would do it, which didn't <laughs> last long because it turned out that under pressure, I can't type very fast, especially on a tablet. Um, but then I think the funniest part was like way later on when you and I were just talking again, because you like you were frozen in the dumbest face position <laughs> ever. And like, I couldn't uh, hear you. I couldn't uh, see you. I, okay. So, side note. Yeah. I need, I've worked out. I need to constantly keep my face moving because it's the only way to look normal because I will go through videos that I do to find a, a nice still yeah, for yeah. the cover. It doesn't exist. No. Apparently whenever my face stops moving <laughs> at any moment, I just look like <laughs> ridiculous so I have to keep this thing moving just to try and look normal. <laughs> you could just start you, every time you stop talking. It, no, it, it doesn't work. I've tried it. <laughs> just like um, have a little thing up that's like, smile. Um. Uh, but yes, I'm, I, I am really excited to get into all this stuff with you today. And if possible, Peggy, I'd love for you to be the mouthpiece for your community because you know, I've seen tons of stuff with your community. They're amazing. 
and shout out to the flock and everyone watching as well. Um, but you obviously know them better than anyone. So I'd love for us to chat about community. I try and bring as much value as I can around that topic, but <clears throat> I'm sure you're you know, getting questions and, and hearing pain points from your people about how they can build community as well. So chuck anything at me and I'll, I'll try and do my best to answer. Sure. Um, cool. So I guess maybe for a first point, I would talk about the early days of trying to build a community. And the way I think about this, it's like building a brand or a company or anything, really. It takes time. And the frustrating bit is when you're at the start of that curve and progress is so slow, you want to pull your hair out because you feel like nothing's happening. That is the nature of the classic like exponential curve, right? So it starts super flat. And then it goes up so gradually, it barely, you know, looks like anything. And then it starts to go up faster and faster. And then it kind of hockey sticks. That is so true for building a personal brand, for building a following on social media, anything like that. That's typically how the curve works. And so many people are stuck in this initial bit of the curve where you can't even notice any progress. And you just think, what's the point? It's so much work. I'm, I feel like I'm getting nowhere. I feel like an imposter. And it kind of sucks. So that's a, a piece I really want to talk about today. And what I would say is when you're in that phase, A, growth should not be your like sole motivation because you actually need to have the patience to ride that out. You need to find joy from the few people that you do have. You need to find joy in the work that you're sharing or your love of teaching or whatever it might be that you're doing. That should really be your sole motivator. And also you need to realize it's a golden time because when you're in that early phase, you have more time available. Like I'm currently with like my personal brand and stuff around my company, it's starting to inflect a bit more and that's very exciting and scale is good and, and that kind of thing. But it really squeezes your time because when you have to get back to a hundred, 200 people a day and DMS and, and comments and so on, and Peggy, I know you know this so well, um, it exhausts the majority of your time. And so you kind of become on the back foot where you're just struggling to keep up. And I don't want to be like boohoo, woe is me. Like I'm super grateful for any growth. And obviously I've, you know, really worked towards achieving that. But part of me misses those old days where I look back and I think, oh man, I used to be able to go so deep with my early community members. I used to be able to build such deep friendships every day. And I wasn't so worried about, you know, keeping up on the hamster wheel. I could just focus on the love of doing it. And so I feel like there's a lot of people in the early phase who are kind of focused on the imposter syndrome that comes with it, the frustration that comes with it. And you should be focused on the one, two, three, seven people that might be showing an interest in what you're doing. I was and, just, yeah, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I was just talking to somebody about this because <clears throat> they have a following. It was like 300 or so people, but they're getting like, 18 comments or something on like all of their posts and i'm like your engagement is incredible and they it, you know it's like, huge really, yeah, yeah. I, I see accounts with a hundred thousand who don't get 18 comments i don't get 18 no there's no way like i get six or if if i'm lucky you know and right. i'm thinking like you have to look at this ratio like your people are engaged with you like that's mm -hmm. special if i could go back to 300 i remember 300 was when i had my like oh i'm so excited about that i have 300 people this is great and that was when i was the most connected with my audience because i had the time to be you know and so like now is the time to really like develop that and nurture that and be like everything else will will fall into place if you're not focused on those numbers it's it's very true and think about your connection with them because then you're going to see your engagement spike. Cause I'll tell you what, if you rush to the numbers, you're not going to see that engagement. Not ever. <laughs> <laughs> it, no, it's so true. And I do think people need that mindset shift because many of my students, Peggy, are the, are the same as that community member you just alluded to where they're unhappy with what they have. And actually what they have is something quite special and something that shows a lot of promise and they should cherish that and realize that's the start of everything that's going to follow. And the way I think about it is it's like um, sparks that start a fire off, right? There's just a few of them. But before you know it, they catch on and the fire starts to really spread and grow into something enormous. And so you have to pay attention to those early sparks 
those early people because they're gold dust, they're everything. And, and they're the people that showed up when no one else knew and no one else cared, right? They're like the diehard true early fans. And, and you know, they, they just mean so much to me. So it's all well and good and people can nod along at this point and go, oh yeah, I guess that makes sense. That sounds nice. But how do you actually do it? And there's a few ways. So I like to think of it in terms of time per follower. And when you have more followers, your time you can allocate to each one drastically goes down. It gets to the point you might not even be able to get back to everyone. So for some people, it's zero, which is painful, right? But in the early days, when you have three people who give a crap and show up and comment on your stuff and leave some supportive comments and stuff, well, you've got hours because you, you haven't got a flood of DMs coming in each day. You know, you, you have time on your hands. And so if there's three people, go make those three people your best friend. And that's exactly what I did. So I had seven people, literally just seven in the early days who kept liking my stuff and leaving nice comments. And I thought, wow, I appreciate these people. You know, they are my early fans. And I'd seen this model play out before. So I knew I really wanted to go above and beyond for them. So I took those seven people and I put them in a group coaching um, call th- set up like this. And I gave them free group coaching for seven months every single week. And this was like, you know, I, I was sick a couple of weeks. I had busy stuff going on, but I showed up every single week for seven months for those seven people for free because my time per follower was enormous and the value per follower was enormous too. And so this is the way I look at it, right? If you get some gigantic celebrity, like if you, um, uh, I don't know, but obviously not so much a celebrity, but like a public figure, but if um, Obama liked your Instagram post or like commented on your post, your life would be like, holy crap, you know, what's happened type thing. Um, and you might tell everyone, you know, and, and Beyonce or like anyone, right. Anyone who's got that huge profile, if they even like looked at you on social media, it would be insane. And you tell all your friends that's very low effort on their part, but it means the world to you because they have the platform and the leverage when you don't have platform and leverage, it's the other way around. So I always like to kind of toy with the notion of like, how much can you over deliver? to those people. So it's almost the other way around. It's like those early followers just left a few comments on my profile, not a huge effort on their part, but super appreciated. So I over delivered back in terms of like relationship building and nurturing and DMing, making them my friends, giving free value. And for the record, this is when I'm running a, you know, fairly large, busy company. This is how much I believe in it. I was using my limited free time around that to over deliver for those people. And sure enough, they became the ones that told their friends, and recommended me and it started to grow out and really build into something. And I've done this over and over and over again in my career. It's leaning into the unscalable, right? Everyone always thinks, how do I go scalable? How do I get another hundred followers or a thousand likes on my post? Or how do I blow up on Instagram or whatever? And that stuff sucks. I really, really believe in the magic of one-to-one interactions. So another example of this is I did, a, um, I did a talk as part of Birmingham Design Festival like a year or so ago. And at this point, my personal brand was much earlier. So I was still trying to really over deliver in terms of the effort I did with those early people because I had a bit more time on my hands. And so I gave a talk to about 130 people. And at some point in the talk, I was, I was teaching this. I was talking about unscalable efforts in marketing and building relationships. And I went, who actually really believes me or who thinks I'm kind of full of shit here and just kind of throwing out, you know, niceties and strategies that I might have read somewhere. And I kind of looked around and everyone like looked a bit shifty. I was like, okay, like I'm going to prove to you that I do this stuff. So what I'm going to do is, sorry, my phone's going, how oh, unprofessional <laughs> business partner, go away. Um, Yeah, what I said, what I'm going to do is I would like as many people as um, they can in the audience to go to my Instagram right now and send me a DM that just says prove it in aggressive capital letters and just say prove it. And that's it. And when I'm done with this talk, I'm going to go and I'm going to do a personal video response for every single person that does that. And so out of about 130 people in the audience, I got about 100 DMs within the space of a few minutes there. 
and I finished my talk. It went very well, met some great people afterwards and chatted with them. And then I walked out on my own and I looked at my DMs. I was like, Ugh, holy crap, <laughs> that's a lot of DMs that have come in. And so I was due to go have drinks and have dinner with some friends. And I was like, guys, I'm going to be like, you know, an hour late or something. I went off to the university library in Birmingham, found a room um, amongst a bunch of students reading because I didn't know where I was going. I was like totally lost. I locked myself in the room and I personally did videos back to 100 people. Like literally like, hey, Kimberly, I'm so glad you enjoyed the talk. Here's me proving it. I checked out your work. It's awesome. I appreciate you. I'll chat to you soon. And what that did was so many people like, oh my God, you really did it. Like, you know, I'm following you. I've been diving in your content. It led to some really good friendships and relationships. There are dozens of instances of stuff that I've done like that behind the scenes. And that's what people don't see. So they kind of see the follower count increasing and think, oh, that's nice. Or, or you know, I wonder how that transpired. And they don't see the work behind the scenes cultivating these relationships. And that's like, that's the catalyst behind everything, right? It's not just that easy. It doesn't happen by magic. And when you are literally making friends one person at a time, one person at a time over a longer period of time, that's the most controllable way to build community rather than just posting work out. And, and I used to always refer to this as shouting into the abyss, right? It's like there's a tornado in your face and you just throw your content, you know, you shout out into that and it gets swept away in the wind, in the noise of social media, and it's just gone. And that's what people are doing. And then they're getting frustrated thinking, why am I getting lost? Why am I getting lost in the tornado? And, and the way to cut through all of that noise is you just go direct one person at a time and talk to people that way. And yeah, it's not scalable, but don't worry about scalable until you have to when you can't keep up with how many messages you're getting and everything's booming, that's a good problem to have. And then there's all kinds of strategies I can tell you about how to scale. But in the early days, don't worry about scalable. Just worry about connecting with as many individual people as you can. Okay. As somebody who I'm trying to put myself in this position where it's like, okay, but that doesn't actually help me achieve. I'm just thinking like, as somebody. Right. De devil's to, advocate. Yeah. yeah. So okay, I hear what you're saying. That's great. And that's a nurture way. That's great. But that's not actually helping me reach my ultimate goal, which is to be able to do the thing that I want to do and let that carry me. So, okay, yeah, I'm doing this thing, but that's not scaling me. Um, I have an answer to this, but I'm curious what yours is. <laughs> Okay, um, so where it, somebody's like stuck in that mindset, like, okay, I'll do that, but that how is that actually helping me get to the next like what I want to actually do? Well, what do you want to actually do would be my question. Well, I don't know because I have a I'm not that person. Um <laughs> okay, let's say I'm, <laughs> and um except that here's the oh man, people that's enough. Okay, I'm just gonna since you asked me that question, I wanna also emphasize the importance of figuring that out because so many people have the answer of like, well, I don't really know where I want to take it. I don't really know what I want to do with it. I don't really know, you know, opportunities or what I, what I should be focused on. Um, real quick, I just want to piggyback on this because I had somebody recently ask me specifically in my membership. Um, they said, how does one get over the hump of feeling so uncomfortable about speaking or doing video content or tutorials and blah do And my mm -hmm. question back to this person who at this point I feel like I'm getting to know um, in my membership is why do you want to do those things if they make you uncomfortable? Do you, is that something that you actually want to pursue? Are you wanting to educate? Are you wanting to do tutorials? Are you wanting to become known for that? Or are you wanting to create art and have your art carry you where you want it to go so you're actually enjoying the work that you're doing? And her answer was like, absolutely not. She doesn't want to be an educator. But the thing is, I think one of the things that really, um, in any industry, no matter who, what you're doing, where you are, the people that are coming up a lot for you the most successful people think about what their role is and why they keep showing up. They keep showing up because that's their path, whatever it may be. Like I'm an educator. Like I love providing resources. Tom is basically like a guru of business, of marketing, of self branding. So he's going to show up a lot for that. His face is going to be recognizable because that's the content he puts out. That's the work that he does. So is that really where you want to go? So don't, 
think that you need to reach this place just because someone's face shows up a lot because that's their path. So yeah. it doesn't mean you can't be successful without your face showing up all over the place. It's just a matter of like, okay, where do you actually want to take this? When Tom asks me as somebody who's putting myself in that position, what is it that I want to be doing? So, um, as like, if I was to not be where I am now and I was going back, um, did I know that I wanted to be an educator? Yes. Did I know exactly like what other buckets that I would be filling my time with or where else I'd want to put energy into? Not really. But I think that at the end of the day, I knew in my heart of hearts what I actually wanted to be doing. And while I did want to be doing all of those other things, I focused on that path. And as I was able I started dabbling in these other things while on that path. And so that way I didn't have to choose like a linear direction, but I did have a focus, which allowed me the time to experiment in those other things. Um, so mm -hmm. personal study, I love educating. That's my thing. Um, I was like, oh, well, maybe I want to do um, licensing. So I didn't make it until I was in year three before I actually started actively looking at licensing. And I've committed like a good chunk of my year to seeking licensing gigs. And I was successful at it because I put my energy into it. But at the end of the day, I didn't actually want to be doing that. Luckily, I had my focus of what I actually wanted to be, actually wanted to be doing. So yep. I think that it's important to understand that like, you don't have to know exactly. Like if I had loved licensing, then I could have taken that on even more. But what I, I like, I really was true to what I wanted to do. And that's not to say like you're committed for life. Like you can focus on something, establish your name and then pivot. You can always pivot. But um, that's the first step in determining what the next stage is to be able to scale. Because if you don't have that identified, then what's the point in scaling right now? Yeah, it is such a key point. And I appreciate this session is about community. So part of me was like, oh yeah, everyone here is going to be on a path where community is going to be a helpful thing. But that's not necessarily the case because I meet so many people where they think the done thing is, oh, I have to go get the big following on social media. That's what I should be doing. And it's often not. Like not everyone needs a big audience or community. Not everyone needs a personal brand. I believe in the efficacy and the power of those things when done right for the right people. But the majority of successful people do not have a big audience or community. Okay. The majority of successful entrepreneurs and business people do not. Certainly with client work and that kind of thing, if you want to grow a client service business, the answer is not get a few hundred followers on Instagram. And that seems to be where everyone starts. If you want to get clients, go talk to clients right go through the actual work of building out a client service business doing good work building up a referral network and pitching the correct people etc 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 not getting another 500 designers to follow you on instagram because it feels good getting that ego massage and that validation of getting a few extra likes so it is, it is what like we are there's documentaries about this we are addicted to likes we are addicted oh, to yeah. validation so that's serotonin like mm -hmm. yeah and so we think that that's the case, but more often it's like, I, you know, we get asked, um, and I'm, I'm guilty of it. We all are. It's like, well, why am I putting all this work out, but none of my following is converting because they all just seem to be people who are doing what I'm doing. And then we just kind of like appreciate mm -hmm. each other's work. And then sometimes one of us is ripped off, but most of the time we're just appreciative and like, yeah, we're building like friendships from that, but that's not converting into my my business, but Instagram, like, yes, it's helpful. And this is funny because uh, like, I always want to say like, you're not going to get work from Instagram. And then there's like the, well, I mean, you might, you, you probably will, but not a lot. <laughs> like that. But all be. the really big designers yeah. on Instagram, typically they actually got big and successful and then grew a following around it. Yes. Because it was easier because they had leverage. They're like, Oh, I'm a respected designer who's had big clients. And that gave them the footing to then build a community around that. It wasn't that they just were a nobody and then became a social media rock star. And then suddenly the clients lined up. It's and normally that, the other if, way around. If that's the case, then maybe you want to be an influencer. 
And then you can get sponsored yeah. by all of these big companies, which I went that road when I was kind of confused and my numbers were growing and people came at me and they were like, Hey, let me give you this random product that has nothing to do with your brand and I'll pay you for it. I'm like, okay. But you know, like <laughs> that's, that's how you have to figure out like, well, how are you going to integrate that into your personal brand? Like maybe you are a personal brand, maybe you're an influencer and there's nothing wrong with that. That's fun. And if you're relatable, then you can like give your honest review and also make a buck or two off of it. And that's great. Um, but unless you're trying to be an influencer, yeah, exactly what Tom said, you know, like five, like I was at 300 followers. Um, mm, okay. So my, I was slowly growing. I, I got up to like, I think it was like 2000 people. And then I, I put up my first Skillshare class. And at that point, um, I had sought out a, an art supply brand and lettering community. So it was Tombow. And that was something that like, I worked really hard at to do. Like I developed that relationship. I nurtured it. I talked to them. Um, and we, and so then I was able to become a, um, uh, ambassador for them. And at the time that was so exciting for me. I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. Like I am ambassador for Tombow. This is rad. And I love them. So, but, uh, that I, when I published my first class, I was then able to reach out to Tombo and say like, Hey, I'm using your pens in this class. Would it, would you be interested in doing like a plug on it on, on your Instagram? And within like the, I don't remember the time span, but it was, it was within a couple of days or a week, but max I had gotten from 2000 to 3,300. I remember, I specifically remember this moment, um, where I was like lettering 3,300. I was so excited. Um, <laughs> But like just things like that. But that is because I started pushing all my content into where I wanted it to go. I had my relationships with the brand and then I built around that. And then that's what boosted my Instagram. So it was kind of like an afterthought. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I, I, I love that. And being intentional, like you don't have to have everything figured out, but you do need to have some idea of where you're going. Mm -hmm. And I know exactly where I'm going with my personal brand. You know, I, I want to do the whole lucrative speaking gigs thing, seeing the world, doing the, the books and scaling the coaching and all those things. So for me, it makes sense for you, Peggy, in terms of building out the amazing community and being an educator and a teacher, it makes sense. But for some people out there who just want to use their social media as a kind of, you know, living, breathing resume and portfolio and build up a network of like-minded people and maybe get a few client inquiries, that's fine too. You don't need to go and get a million followers in order to do that. And I'm sure your time might be better spent elsewhere. But that being said, if you are looking to do any of the things I just mentioned, um, if you're looking to start a brand, I, I, you know, I've got people who are letterers who now sell merch like Zolfa at the Cosmic Feminist. You know her? Mm -mm. Oh, she's so awesome. I'm gonna look her up, um, check it out. So she's got this really cool, like space age um, aesthetic. And she was one of my coaching students. And I basically encouraged her to lean more into the theme of feminism because it was something she was so passionate about, but she was kind of like lukewarm in her mm. content. She wasn't fully committed to it. So she did that and she blew up. I think she's about to hit a hundred thousand followers or something. She's now got a store. She sells clothing, this incredible stuff. She is someone where community has been enormous with that, right? Her whole business is predicated on community. So there's tons of businesses where community is the answer, but not every business. I'm looking at her. Be, I'm looking at her. It, it's awesome, right? right? It's really cool. I, yeah. I, f I feel like, yeah, I feel so proud when I see everything that she's done because she, believe it or not, early days, she had, you know, the same imposter syndrome as all of us and, and felt really unsure of where she was going and so on. But, but she has nailed it and works super hard. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's another thing though. Like people talk about consistency and you talk about niching all the time, which is a whole other topic we can get into at another, at another time. I mean, maybe not this I'm lying because this event's only happening right now, <laughs> but eventually, you know, you actually have a great guide that people can grab the ultimate niching guide, but, um, her page, if, if you look at it, um, the cosmic feminist, it is very like niche. Like she has got her look. And if you are going for selling your art, um, you will notice she's a perfect case study because she's got lettering, she's got illustration, so she's able to marry things that she loves, but she's got a very 
um, specific aesthetic that is true to her as a brand versus being like, oh, I'm experimenting in all of these things and maybe I can sell all of them. And it's yeah. not to say you can't experiment because you totally can, but when it comes to actually building a brand and curating around that, either working in collections is gonna be really helpful, like where you, know, you have a string of things that are all very specific to this and then switch it or like have it be very consistent. Um, Cause that's, what's going to really, oh, that I'm looking. Okay. I'm, I have to stop looking. It's really, I'm like, Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's yeah, cool. It's great work, right? I'm going to yeah. see you in a, a hoodie next time we chat. Yeah. Um, so, so what specific questions do you think your audience have around community? Cause that's where I want to try and help the most. Yeah. Um, so I think, okay. Putting myself into that position, let's say, okay, here's a question. Let's say somebody is, wanting to we're we're you know we're talking queer community right now a lot of people might feel actually i know this there are some people who are speaking during this time or presenting during this time who are just feeling like they're coming into their skin like they're just able to finally start talking about their identity and it's feeling empowering and scary what would you say to people who are in this in a similar boat who are like okay my identity isn't necessarily public, but I really want to hone into that in my, in my journey of what I put out into the world online. Um, how would, how, as somebody who is very focused on niching, how would you recommend somebody might go about doing that in art of any kind? I know that it's, uh, yeah, like, it's no, hard no, to I, say. I get it. Okay. I, um, so when it comes to branding, that there's really there's two sides to this question, and the second side makes me sad, which I'm going to get to in a second. Um, when it comes to branding and business, then fully leaning into being your true self, I mean, this is true in business and life, right, is a very good thing. Mm -hmm. um, in, the, in the macro sense, people are really drawn to authenticity and truth and, and it really it's very attractive i feel when people are are just owning themselves right and a, a great example of this is my friend dina rodriguez who she is very publicly and proudly a feminist uh sex positive bisexual um and even like just a heavy smoker of cannabis right mm -hmm. they're kind of her things that she's known for and does she shy away from those things? No. Oh, and body positive as well. Mm -hmm. So, so she, she's, um, you know, this kind of recipe of all these awesome things and she shouts it from the rooftops. She doesn't hold back. She says whatever's on her mind. She's super direct and she's built this incredible community because people get very drawn to that. And even I have been in, in terms of, I, I look at her and think like, well, I'm pretty good at putting myself out there, but her confidence and, and it, you know, just her passion is, is so inspiring to me. I'm like, damn, she wants, it, it, she makes me want to be me even more, right? I find, I find her very inspiring as a character. So from that side of things, like it's a really, really good idea. And I think when you do open up and, and share, not even, you know, necessarily those big pillars of who you are, but also the little idiosyncrasies that mm. make us tick, right? Um, th those little funny quirky small things about our characters and our personalities and our hobbies they really draw us to people as well because people like commonalities so they're like oh they play ultimate frisbee too or whatever it might be um like whatever silly thing it's like oh they love blueberries as well like so do mm -hmm. i people connect on those and so i talk a lot in my content about this it's like macro branding and micro branding and i truly believe that the micro elements are actually equally important so I'm a huge believer in sharing it all. So there's a few caveats here. One is that much like that curve I talked about earlier, it takes time. No one wakes up one day and is like, oh, I'm going to share every aspect of myself incredibly, you know, perfectly and confidently. And it, it really takes time to lean into that. So when I started doing videos for my social media, it took me an hour of sitting on the side of my bed. I might have told you this before, Becky. It took me a full hour <laughs> to film a 30 second video. It was so ridiculous because I had this little selfie video shaking hand and I was like, Hey guys, I'm doing a video update. <laughs> I was like, Oh, I was like, Oh, that sucks. Delete. <laughs> so, so I deleted it. And then, and then I tried again. I was like, no, that's terrible. Oh no. People are going to think I look dumb. Delete, delete, delete. I, I literally did a hundred takes in that hour. 
I finally posted this 30 second video and I felt like I'd run a marathon. I was like sweating. I was exhausted. I was like emotionally exhausted. I posted it and no one really cared. It got a few likes and a couple of people like, huh, nice video. And that was it. And I was like the trauma I put myself through. (laughs) And, And so I do understand, you know, it's taken me years to get comfortable enough to do calls like this and feel completely myself and comfortable. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes practice like anything else. It takes perpetually and gradually leaning out of your comfort zone is the way to do it. You know, you take those small steps into the uncomfortable until that becomes comfortable. And then you take another small step. And what's cool about it is it's liberating, you know, when you show up as yourself, like you start feeling more empowered at each and every time. And then like, what's really cool is whether you have seven followers, 300 or a hundred thousand, these people are along that journey with you. So that's, yeah. And if they're cheerleading for you, that's the best feeling. So it's, there's nothing wrong with being like, like showing up in that weird, insecure, vulnerable place, because that is connection. If nothing else is like, that's relatability. Mm. Oh yeah, of, of course it is. And so often people, um, I mentioned that free coaching I did for seven months for my seven core people. And they'll be like, that makes no sense. Your hourly rate is this. Why the hell would you give it away for free? And I'm like, okay, I can give you so many positives. I'm like, I made some great friends. I actually taught myself how to be a coach and see if I enjoyed that. I got more confident on video. I got more organized working with people. I created fans for life who then went, like there's so many benefits that come from that and, and everyone's so kind of transactional about the money. Mm. Um, but kind of back to the, the caveats I mentioned, and I think it's important when talking about this stuff to exercise empathy because I am very aware that as like, a cis white man it's mm. very easy to say hey just be yourself and I've I know helped, when I, I asked you I, that question I was like I hope this doesn't make you uncomfortable and put on the spot ass no 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 no, no. It, it, no it doesn't so um um you know of, of course um you know with regards to sexuality it's not always that easy for people um I completely understand that but with even with branding and just being yourself in general um I've coached people with this And then I've had some people come back to me who've been women and said, well, when I put myself out there and put my face in my stories more, I had jerks like sexually harassing me, Mm. right? That's, that's not something that I have to go through um, because men can be idiots with that. (laughs) Um, Anybody anybody can, I'll like, just as example, I'll give two examples so that we can really relate here. Um, I was on live. I used to do Thursday lives uh, when I had more time, but um, I've been told, and it wasn't for a long, like long stint of time, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you a couple things. First, you beaver teeth F is what somebody said to me. I remember you said, yeah, let's, and, let's but I track like them to, down and beat them. <laughs> I like to use this as an example because like that is something like I used to be self-conscious about. So that could have hit and stung really hard. And I could have let that like drive the rest of the chat. Another one was wear a bra. And like, I I was wearing a bra. It was kind of a loose one. I get it. But who cares? Like, I don't have to wear a bra if I don't want to, like, I can do whatever I want with my body and have it be comfortable. But the point is like, I later looked, I like was talking and I acted like I didn't see it. And I just wrote down their handle while I was, cause I was curious. <laughs> and I'll yeah. tell you what, every single time somebody tries to get you with sexual harassment, with any kind of harassment, I am like guaranteeing, like I would put a thousand dollars on it every time that they are sitting behind a private profile because they are cowards and they're just saying shit to of make, so. like, to make themselves feel better about mm-hmm. whatever it is that they're going through. So like, while it's seems- what, what, oh, one of the things I've seen is like, <laughs> um, oh, hey, Brad, I've just screenshotted your horrendous comments and DM them to your girlfriend <laughs> to show her what kind of person you are. And then it's like, hmm, okay, let's backpedal. <laughs> um, well, I just, yeah. I like personally, I know that everybody deals with this differently, but I would say, like, I know it's easier said than done, but overlook it and it's not there. Like put it out of your mind. Those people don't deserve your energy whatsoever. Yeah. yeah. And and for example, Dina being such a fantastically outspoken person, I, I know she gets haters and people who like disagree with her message and whatever. And, you know, she, she's got this tremendous strength of character where she keeps going, but I'm sure it bugs her like it bugs the rest of us. And so 
it's such an important caveat because I know it's the right decision from a brand perspective. I know it's incredible for developing your personal confidence when you learn to put yourself out there more and more over time and kind of own who you really are and share that with the world. Um, but it would be very naive of me just to say, yeah, go do that. It's easy mm-hmm. because it's not easy. Mm-hmm. Even if you are a white man in my case, it's still incredibly hard and scary to do that. So I can only imagine that if you are someone that's going to have idiots like harassing you or judging you more than they might me, then it's, it's going to be infinitely harder than it would be for me, which is already difficult. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do it, but I think it's just an important thing to kind of, you know, layer on top of the advice. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, it can, it can be tricky, but, um, that being said though, I, I do think that if you are feeling a drive to do something and if you are feeling stuck in any way, it doesn't have to exactly what Tom said. You don't have to suddenly turn an on switch and scream everything from the top of a mountain. Like this can be something that you start sharing in small bits and let your let your people, it doesn't matter if it's a huge crowd or not, let your people come along that journey with you because you're going to start coming into your own. Um, I have a really good friend, uh, Sarah Wild, her, it's the inky hand. And she is just like one of the sweetest, like most, I just love this human. And um, about, oh gosh, my time is so funny how fast it it goes. Maybe it was a year ago. I don't really know, but she started feeling um, kind of she just started feeling things and she realized that she was bi, but then she realized later that she was actually gay. And it's really interesting because she already had a large following. So that was probably tricky for her, but she started really coming in and like, Oh, like owning that. And finally she put herself out there and like her community met her with warmth and it was really exciting. And now she has shifted into, um, she's a letterer she's shifted into this stance where she takes, where she's able to speak up on behalf of like the things that matter to her. And she's doing very value-based work, which is, um, it's really admirable to see somebody grow in that, especially so early on, which I know is not going to be the case for everyone. Like it's not that easy, but, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that, I think that it's, uh, it's empowering to be able to release yourself (laughs) It, it, it is i think it's one of the most powerful liberating things in life and um you know even on the small scale that i've done it it's been one of the best things i've ever done like forget any monetary or business gain or brand gain from it yeah like i at my brother's wedding i was his best man and i've got a lifelong terrifying fear of public speaking believe it or not um because i know when we get talking we can talk forever but put me in front of a group of people just staring silently at me and I clam up, I get the shaky hands, all of that, or at least I did. But after I did 200 podcast episodes and kept putting myself in Instagram stories, I went and did the best man speech and I was like, wow, I did that. And it felt okay Mm -hmm. because I've just been talking so much and putting myself out there so much. I had unknowingly got comfortable with that side of things. And it was such a, a proud moment. And, and there's been so many, areas of life that have kind of developed like that you know you put yourself out there and some of your best friends kind of poke fun at you a bit for doing it but in a a nice way and before you know it they're just supporting you and being genuinely impressed with what you're building and i just think it's like if community fits your business goals realize it will also probably fit your life goals because it will make you more confident it will make you more empowered it's actually incredible for introspection as well when you're talking to people all day and you know kind of figuring out who you are and how you're going to put yourself out there to your community and how you're going to serve them and the the friendships you're making you learn so much about yourself Mm -hmm. yep i i completely agree and i think that that's okay to feel when you might otherwise be feeling panicked about your direction i know that pressure is real and it can be stifling to your process but if you live within your process then everything kind of organically falls into place i know that that's easier to list to hear than actually believe and take action with but um as far as where you want to take yourself it's identify it and along that journey let everything else trickle in and let yourself show up Mm -hmm and connect with people 
and doors will open as you dig deeper. Um, I know I'm just going to really quick because I don't want to take too much more of your time here, but I wanted to pull from what we had talked about earlier as far as when you said like, oh, if you're looking for clients, do the work. Um, I just wanted to piggyback because a lot of people probably are wondering like, well, what does that mean? Do the work. Um, literally email the client, <laughs> like pitch yourself. And I know that that sounds really intense, but it's like, there's nothing wrong with showing up and saying, Hey, this is what I do. Here's how we could do this together. We could make this really cool thing happen. And the very worst thing that's going to happen is nothing because they say, no, nothing changes. You're in the exact same spot as when you started. So if you get a no, um, by the way, I never take no. I put no into my potential collaborators to follow up with six months later. If I really want to work with them, I don't take no. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> because I'm like, oh, they're going to change their mind. But Because um, you're tenacious. That's true. But I understand not everybody is. But basically, like, reach out to the person and they're in dig. Don't just like reach out to their general customer service inbox, like figure out who it is um, that is the creative director or art director or um, whatever yeah, it is. But, but you know what? So often people, they hear this stuff and they're like, yeah, that's common sense that you put in the extra work and find the people. But the answer so often is put in the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Like if, uh, here's, here's something I can tell you in five seconds, which you would have to follow up with a lot of work. Peggy, I know you chatted with Mike Janda recently, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, like Mike has way more client service agency experience than I do. And he puts out a ton of free content. So if you want to get better at landing clients, go follow Mike and consume mm -hmm. more of his free content and put in the work to actually do that and put it in practice. There's your answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it does take a minute and having structure is really helpful. So like I have an email template swipe that people can use that is very personalized because don't ever send what's obviously a copy paste. I know Mike just put out a course freelance with Janda. Like there are resources and I know that like it can be overwhelming with how many resources, but it's a matter of like, this is not linear and here's a roadmap to how it's not. And so here's what, exactly. like, take these little yeah. bits and pieces and then just do it because mm -hmm. the first few might feel really daunting and might take a really long time. The very first time that I pitched myself to somebody, it was like, it was like Tom said, it took me like over an hour and I, w I just kept rewording my email. I kept like looking at their site. I kept looking, you know, like going all over the place in circles, but because I didn't want to press send. Um, but then my biggest suggestion to people is like, once you press send, go out of your, get away from your computer, shut it, go do something else. And just that's it. Because if you sit there and you stare at your inbox or you have the option to press undo, like you're going to, but the more that you do that and the more you send those out, it's just going to be a lot faster process. You already know what you're after. Um, you just find the person you put in your swipe. That's totally not a swipe because you want to personalize it throughout your paragraphs. Also, when I say paragraphs, I mean like three broken sentences because people don't want to hear all about your resume. They don't care. They just want to know what you have to offer because we have two second attention spans and their emails, I guarantee you are overflowing. So don't even make this about you right now, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like there are resources. Yes. So mm -hmm. it is do the work. It, it, That's There are. And, and same thing with improving your work, same thing with getting more confident and putting yourself out there. Same thing with building community the resources are there if you dig for them, but realize it takes time. No one goes naught to 60. No one gets good, good at anything overnight. So it's just putting in that work. But And tying in those two things about putting in the work to work with people and also staying true to like what it is that you want to be doing, I recommend reaching out to the companies or brands that hold your values and offering some sort of collaboration, whether it be monetary or something that you do for social, because um, that's where you really start to establish, like, first of all, feeling good about what you're doing, which is what the whole point is, but also um, how you start networking and building um, and, and like cross networking, if you will, where you are, there's a word I'm looking for. It's not coming right now, but like Tom and I talk all the time and like, that's cro like, I'm an educator in art 
and somewhat in business entrepreneurship in this particular category, whereas Tom is like a freelance um, uh, personal brand coach. And so we're able to cross paths very organically, but sometimes it might be somebody who's just a step out of your circle. And that's where you can really benefit by piggybacking off of each other. And then growing that does that make sense yeah it, it does and i i think when you like people building that network becomes less sleazy networking totally um, yeah. and more fun it's like um a couple of weekends ago we just had a, a weekend catch up and like a drink as friends yeah, you and i i was like who's right? we me and you <laughs> yeah 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 exactly um and, and, and that's what it's all about, you know, that as well as um, community, as I say, being good for your business, good for building your confidence. And um, the fact it's almost like holding a mirror up to yourself mm-hmm. um, in terms of that, that introspection and self-awareness, you also make friendships, you know, you also, also build this amazing network. So there's a, a ton of good stuff that can come from it. hundred percent. Yeah. And I think that the fine line between business and friendship, there isn't one when you do what you love. They're just like, mm-hmm. it's, it's one and the same. So that's exciting. So I know that's a lot. I really appreciate you chatting with me about this, Tom. Um, it's I wanted, been super fun. Yeah. I wanted yeah. to also mention, like, I know that you're offering these coaching calls. I know that you have a ton of resources out so you can find Tom at Tom Rouse Media, um, the Honest Entrepreneur uh, podcast, along with all the 19 podcasts that you have right now. Oh my gosh. Biz Buds with Mike is Biz the main Buds one. Biz Buds yeah. with Mike Janda. Because <laughs> he's my buddy. Yeah. <laughs> every, guys, every single time that Tom and I talk at all about Biz Buds, and you probably do this on the podcast. I'm so sorry I don't have time, but I will listen to it one of these times. But he always is like, oh yeah, my podcast with Mike Biz Buds, because he's my buddy. He always has to say it. I'm, I, I, I'm so proud of it. It took us but he always with that name. kind of like coy. Wait, he's like, because he's wait, my buddy. He, he's my friend. <laughs> I made him my buddy. Um, I forced him it, to be my best friend. <laughs> I um I mentioned before we hit record, can I share my, yeah. given the theme of this event, can I share oh, yeah, my pride yeah. story? Yeah. So um, basically there's a huge uh, pride parade march that happens in London every year. And this is like a few years back now, but at the time, one of my best friends worked for eBay and they got a, uh, you know, got a float and, and a section in the March, like an official one. And I forget why, but they had a couple of extra wristbands. So he was like, come join the team representing eBay and be part of the, the parade itself. And originally I thought he meant like be in the audience. He was like, no, be part of the actual parade going through London with like you know millions of people and stuff so i was like okay can't say no to that that sounds crazy so we're all like marching through as a group like it's just amazing energy the float in front of us is a a punk rock float (laughs) so that they're like rocking out like playing this incredible music the entire time and we're just like dancing away behind so anyway it's like super hot drinking loads of water and i'm like oh my god this is terrible i need to pee like I really need to pee and this is a quite a long walk. I can't hold it. So I had to like climb over one of the railings, jump into a local pub and it was so busy in there. It took me a while, but eventually I made it out and I was like, crap, I need to get back in. There's a security guy there and I'm like, okay, I got the band. He's like, right back in and catch up with your friends. But it had taken me so long. They were like a mile down the parade and all these other groups had gone past us. So I was like, oh shit, I need to catch up, I need to catch up. So I just started sprinting as fast as I could. And either side, there's thousands of people on my left and my right. And I I don't know what they thought I was doing, but they just started cheering me sprinting. And I felt like I was Usain Bolt or something. So they're like, yeah, like go on. And you're there like, <laughs> like running through so London. I that you had a cape. I want it, that. It, honestly, you, you felt like high. I was like, yeah. is this how people feel at the Olympics? It's like just cheering either side. I was like, this feels amazing with my like t- terrible running style. <laughs> like suddenly you have like no, like 
with the adrenaline because I hate running but I feel like if yeah. you like, heard all of that you'd be like I'm invincible I can do this all yeah. day yeah <laughs> and it hadn't just been water we'd been drinking either so <laughs> there was like a little buzz on thousands of people cheering and you're like this is the greatest feeling in the world you probably <laughs> think you're running so much faster than you actually are <laughs> yeah yeah I know right like <laughs> my awkward running style is like fantastic um but yeah every, everyone after was like how was pride I was like best day ever ever and, like, I yeah, was on a pride really float. Fun. I was on a pride float one time and it was for um a burlesque troupe and uh I was fire dancing at the time but not you, on you the can float. fire dance huh you can fire dance oh yeah I did it for eight years oh my god you learn something new every day every day that's so cool uh, thanks. Yeah. Um, I taught it for four years that's how I really learned that I love teaching because I can watch people's minds and I can like identify when they're doing like hand stuff I can identify like where they're thinking and I'm like okay try it. like no do like it's digging into someone's mind tweaking it and then suddenly they do the thing and oh my gosh that feels so satisfying mm-hmm. and that's where I learned like I love teaching but um anywho I was dressed I I don't know the only thing I really remember about this was I was dressed in this adorable giant tutu and <laughs> crown and like I looked really cute except style I icon what style icon oh yeah I looked Always. really good but I remember I had like the biggest like huge painful zit like in between the creek like <laughs> like I remember it so well and I remember being on the float and I had a really good friend I, she's actually she's in this she's doing winged eyeliner um in I saw that line. earlier yeah, yeah yeah so she's a good friend of mine she's been with me for years and years but she comes up to me she's like Peggy let me get this and I'm like mm. <laughs> so we're like on the float and she's like getting in and it hurts so bad my eyes are watering it was real intense but yeah that's what i remember most about this entire thing is like <laughs> this giant zit that she oh like, that's your painful pride memory own. yeah all on her own though it wasn't like oh this hurts i wish it wasn't like she's like oh i'm coming in here to help you out. I, I i feel like there's two camps of people there's the people that have the urge to do that and the people yeah. that find it disgusting yes yeah <laughs> um I, I know a few people that, that like doing it. For me, I'm like, I would have left nope. your face to learn. Nope, not, not a chance. Not a chance. Yeah. Not going to happen. Not ever. Yeah, so <laughs> pride, pride events. Good stories from pride events. Um, I can't wait to see what this, this whole weekend brings. because I'm sure we're all going to have weird stories about our online pride events. But again, Tom, thank you so much. Um, people know where to find you, and I hope that they do. Uh, I know that they will. So at uh, Tom Ross Media, everything he puts on Instagram. I know that Instagram is yeah, not the place, but I know we're all sitting top, on Instagram. TomRoss.co.co is the main, main place yeah. these days, really. And then everything from there, whatever you want to find, will branch off. Okay, well, I will talk to you soon. Thank you so, 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 so much. Thank you so much for having me.